exposure to a lot of the uh, transportation logistics and even the demand management. So I, I looked at it to broaden my perspective uh, quite a bit. Yeah. Well, let me kind of follow up to that. Mm -hmm. The you know many programs at the master's level they either have a thesis that students work mm -hmm. on or mm -hmm. they have a research project. Mm -hmm. We decided to make it more practical and uh, have the student learn something, but also provide a benefit back to the company. Yep. Uh, and ours with the research project, it's a benefit back to the company. So, Jeff, what type of research project did you have and, and what were some of the benefits that went back to your company and to you, perhaps? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. I mean, it was uh, really kind of a very fun project for uh, myself and, and, and uh, some of the other students that partnered with me on this. Uh, I actually leveraged one of the existing OEMs that I work with. Uh, in the industrial automation sector, and uh, you know they they were uh, a large company that uh, had a large market share. Um, they had grown through a lot of acquisitions, a lot of good success. Um, they were trying to be all things to all people. A lot of complexity to their business process. So we came in. Um, they really looked for our help, um, and uh, we looked at areas in the demand, the uh, the supply product, <coughs> as well as the manufacturing. Uh, arena and uh, addressing a lot of those issues and doing a lot of research and bringing a lot of things that we learned within the program to the table. Do you have an estimate of, uh, in terms of dollars, mm -hmm. perhaps in terms of cost effectiveness or cost efficiency about how much this is going to give to your company in, in the next few years, this well, savings? Or? Well, absolutely. I mean, I think that's one of the benefits I think they've seen is partnering with us. Um, they were already seeing in the neighborhood of you know, 30 to 40 percent return on their investment of uh, some of the things that we've already accomplished within the the PLM or the product lifecycle piece. But some of the things that we focused upon, they were even identifying some additional savings on top of that within 20 to 30 percent in that neighborhood. So there were some significant business benefits um, that that company, you know, our sponsor company was addressing. Well, Jim, if this is the case, if, if the company's getting so much return on investment, maybe we ought to charge future students more. What do you think of that? <laughs> I, think I'll, I think I'll leave that to you, Dean Parker. Take a look. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, uh, could you, and I know you supervise a lot of the students in the program, yeah, that's could right. you uh, give the folks looking in today maybe an example of a couple other types of projects that sure. they had with other companies? Sure, uh, I supervised a couple projects that we, we just finished, so let me talk about uh, those a little bit. One of them was a, was a green supply chain initiative with a, with a uh, computer services company. And they were able to find a substantial amount of, of savings from, from the recycling of their used computer equipment, uh, more, more than a million dollars of hard savings, and they, and they project more than $15 million of, of continuing savings as they fully implement a, a, a supply chain recycling approach with their vendors on uh, computer equipment, including both the, the savings from recycling costs and savings from future purchases. So that was a tremendous project, I thought. Uh, and, and it had both the, the, the hard savings benefits to the company and the societal benefits of reducing waste in the, in the supply chain. Um, I supervised another project that is involved with a more traditional manufacturer, and they had an inventory control challenge. They had a substantial amount more inventory in their pipeline than they, than they really needed, and they needed to free up cash flow. For, for in this uh, point of the economy, cash flow become, can become very important. So the students, through some, uh, I think some very clever programming work, were able to identify over a million dollars of inventory reduction for this company, which frees up a huge amount of cash flow and is an ongoing uh, improvement because it, it actually increased the speed of delivery to their customers as they did this because uh, as we know from our coursework, Little's Law, that, that time is proportional to inventory, that we're able to substantially speed up uh, deliveries by taking out inventory. So really a net, net win for, for this organization. Yeah. And, the student, and the students learned a lot in applying these principles at the company. Yeah. Well, we've heard a lot of just discussion in the last few minutes about the program in terms of you know, it's a blended program where mm -hmm. you come in on a, every other, come in whatever two or three months for two That's or three correct. days, That's and then correct. the rest of it is online. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have the project where you work under the supervision of a faculty. Mm -hmm. Jeff, just going through the program, if if someone from the newspaper calls you up and says, Jeff, you just finished this program, tell me what you think is the one most significant, unique feature mm -hmm. of the program that you think Wright State's Rod Sokol Business has that maybe other programs don't have. What would you tell them? Well, you know, the flexibility of the program, um, certainly as a working professional, I mean, it really kind of allowed me to, you know, be, you know, flexible to my, to my work schedule. I mean, it, uh, there's a lot of significance there. You know, I, I know you asked me for one, 
but I mean, there's there's many, but uh, I say that's probably one of the biggest. But also, it's it gives me a lot of credibility with my customer. I come in and it gives me the the business side of you know actually supporting and and helping with the value proposition, you know, supporting my value proposition to my customer. Yeah. Well, we get toward the end, and let me ask mm -hmm. let me ask you, Jim, a couple more questions. Well, as you know, being an AACSB accredited program, mm -hmm. um, and only a third of the business schools in the United States are AACSB credited, mm -hmm. so we have to make sure we keep that in front of us all the time. That's correct. Uh, what do you think is going to be a major change? We have to always have continuous improvement. Or was there, every time we start a new program, we want to make it better than the previous program. What is that's one change that you and your colleagues have talked about maybe doing now that's going to be different? Well, we've been, wor we've been working with the business community to address our learning goals and learning objectives, which are a critical part of the AACSB accreditation, to, to redefine uh, our goals in such a way that it are relevant to the business community. So one of them that we added last, last year in terms of that was, was addressing issues with sustainability, we've, which has generated several projects, and the one I just suggested was a multi-million dollar improvement in, in uh, the company from this emerging area of sustainability. So we've built that into our learning goals Based on uh, input from the business community, that, that's something they're looking for. Uh, so that, that's part of the, as I view it, the AACSB's uh, request for continuous improvement on our part. Involving the business community in our, in our program design and then implementing that in such a way that we can monitor and establish that we're actually delivering those learning goals to our students. Yeah. Well, and of course we know ethics are so important, mm -hmm. regardless mm -hmm. of whether it's a economics or marketing or law course or whatever, but I understand when you designed this program, Jim, that you all mm -hmm. focused a little bit on ethics. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk about how ethics is related to supply chain? I'm sure a lot of folks looking into, in today don't understand how, et how ethics is, could be related to supply chain. Sure, sure. Well, we, we've also built that into our learning goals that, to establish the, the, the there are legal and um, professional standards that are actually incorporated into supply chain management as a profession. So we want to make sure our students understand the le their legal and, and professional responsibilities as they make decisions. Uh, many of these decisions made by our, our students are, are very large with, with both societal and organizational impact. They want to understand the, the full scope of those decisions and they want to understand the, the requirements as laid down by law. Uh, we have uh, con contractual and uh, trade agreements that are, are necessary to be understood. And secondly, the professional standards through our crediting body, bodies, uh, they, we do teach that some of those elements too. So it's important that they understand how their decisions impact both their organizations and the environment their organizations work in. So that, I think that's how we approach that. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, Jeff, let me ask this. Yours, Siemens is an international company. Yes. As we know. Yes. And just like ethics, we think that in our college business that globalization is something that all students should get a better handle on. Whether it's right. an undergraduate program, whether it's a this graduate right. program right. or our master's program in accounting. Uh, did you get a lot of globalization out of this program in terms of had what would, would assist you with, with Siemens in, in, in this area? Oh, absolutely. Supply chain? Absolutely. I mean, you know, I was talking to Dr. Hamster and, you know, even after the program, there was a lot of uh, use cases that he was talking about. And I can remember one off the top of my head that was fresh in my mind was Zara, you know, ah. that we talked about. And, uh, you know, it was just a, a good exposure to a global company. And, you know, er, you know, some of the, you know, Siemens, as you had mentioned, is a global company. And, and we do a lot of things. We do a lot of follow the sun, provide a lot of follow the sun technologies. And uh, exposure to the program and the globalization aspects of it certainly are there present, and uh, exposure to that really were beneficial. Okay, mm -hmm. well, this has been a real interest. This has been one of our better programs. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, we're dealing with supply chain, which is one of our better uh, disciplines in this college of business. What, Jim, I understand you're going to be coming up and start a new program if the dean will allow you <laughs> in a few months. Uh, can you give, if folks out here looking, they might want to, after hearing <clears throat> you two guys talk, I know they're interested in this, they probably want to sign up for the programs. Mm -hmm. Can you tell them what they need to do to learn more about how to become a member of the next cohort? Sure, we have posted a lot of information on the website and we'll put a link to the website up on the, and on the screen uh, where, where you can go and find the starting dates. We start July and in, in January every year, two cohorts a year. And the exact date and the uh, application information will be posted online. So, in addition to online, we also have some newsprint, don't we? We do. But we do some some marketing work, uh, both both uh, 
both the newspaper uh, some, and particularly we focus on some of the trade publications and some of the online publications uh, for, our, for our marketing activities. But probably online is the best way to get the most up to date and, and the quickest information. Is our, that correct? Our, our program website is is up to date, and we we've worked very hard to to make it current. So we th we think that's the starting point to get information is the, the best place. Okay, well, I want to thank you, Jeff, for being with us today and 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 being with Siemens, and I yep. want to thank you, Jim, thank you. for mm -hmm. being one of our yep. top faculty and. Uh, we just pleased to bring this program of supply chain to everybody and uh, keep in mind, as I said earlier, that the Rawlinson on College of Business is one of the few schools in the U.S. in the top third of accreditation by ACSB, and, and we're proud of that. So yep. uh, stay tuned for our next program. You have been watching Trends in Business and Business Education. Please give us your suggestions for future programs. Just go to www.wright.edu slash business and click on Contact Us. Watch this and future programs on local cable access channels. The programs are also available anytime on the web through iTunes U and the Wright State University Public Education and Government Web channel. Details for accessing the program are on our website.